No, stay where you are. Do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is... ScareFM.com 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 Frightening sounds echo through the halls Whenever candlelights flicker Where the air is deathly still That is the time when ghosts are present Practicing their terror with ghoulish delight to Scare FM. I am Seymour, your ghost host. Scare FM provides you with spine-chilling vintage haunted radio that originally aired in the early 1930s when TV was not an option. Our radio show comes from the archives of The Sealed Book, The Strange Doctor Weird, The Witch's Tale, The Blue Beetle, The Mysterious Traveler, and other vintage Haunted Radio archives provided to you exclusively by Scare FM. Scare FM is syndicated and streamed throughout the globe via iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, Facebook, Twitter, Blogger, YouTube, RSS feeds, and a host of other internet websites. Don't be frightened. Sit down. Relax as we unravel the mysteries of the macabre, only provided to you by Scare FM. Before we get started with our first episode, a word from the Scare FM advertisers. Having a haunted house, Halloween party, or haunted event this year? Are you ready with all the best haunted sound effects, pumpkin teeth, and video effects? Find them all at soundsofterror.com. Sounds of Terror has everything you need to give your haunted house, party, or event the perfect sounds and visual effects. Don't wait. Go to Sounds of Terror. That's S-O-U-N-D-S-O-F-T-E-R-R-O-R.com. Halloween is almost here. Prepare yourself. Soundsofterror.com. Hi, this is John Hires, creator of John Hires Visual Effects, and we love listening to Scare FM. Hi, I'm Mike Bowers, the owner of the popular Halloween website UKDevils.com, where it's more than just a website, and I love tuning into Scare FM. Hi, this is Craig Hines, the evil genius from DarkImaginings.com, and we love listening to Scare FM. This is a chainsaw-wielding maniac from Haunted Overload in Lee, New Hampshire, and we love listening to Scare FM. (laughs) 
Thank you for listening to our advertisers. If you are thinking of advertising on ScareFM, simply go to ScareFM.com for more information. Now it's time to listen to Episode 1. Barry Sullivan in... The Unexpected. I'd planned that vacation for months. Yes, I'd planned it all. Two weeks. Two weeks in the high Sierras alone with Kathy. A second honeymoon. And everything would have worked out just the way I'd planned if I hadn't met the unexpected. The unexpected. A secret future. A hidden destiny waiting for you. Where? When? Who knows? Tomorrow, today, an hour from now, perhaps in just a moment, you too will meet the unexpected. And now, one of America's favorite motion picture stars, Barry Sullivan, in Handle with Care, a drama of the unexpected. The hot afternoon sun wilted my collar and the sidewalk sizzled under my feet, but I didn't notice the heat. Not me, no, sir. I was too happy. And why not? Tomorrow, I'd be 500 miles away from the city on my vacation. Two weeks, alone with Kathy, away from everything and everyone. Yes, sir, we'd be able to make a fresh start. I remembered our first honeymoon, when I was all that Kathy needed. But now, somehow, she'd changed. She said she wanted to get a divorce. Ah, but the next two weeks would bring her back to me. <coughs> Kathy! Kathy! Where are you, Kathy? In the bedroom, Kathy. I'll come in and help you. My things won't take long. Gosh, Kathy, you don't need all this stuff. We're only going to be gone two weeks. Say, are you taking this old trunk, too? Yes. But why, in heaven's name? It's big enough to hold everything you own. Please get out of my way, Philip. I want to pack this evening gown. Uh, What do you want formal clothes for in a mountain cabin? Don't be stupid, Philip. I'm not going on your silly little vacation. What? Uh, What do you mean? I mean I'm leaving you. For good. Oh, you can't. You promised that you'd give me these two weeks. Stop kidding yourself, Philip. If you want the truth, I never have loved you. Not from the very beginning. Kathy, you can't mean that. You always said that... Now, Philip, be a good boy and call the express company to pick up my trunk. I'm leaving for Reno tonight. Reno? Don't be difficult, Philip. No, Kathy. No, I won't give you a divorce. I won't. I'm leaving you. Get that through your thick head. You've got to listen to reason. Kathy, my darling, Don't touch me, Philip. But, Kathy, really, I... Can't you understand? I don't want you near me. I won't let you out of this room. Get out of my way. No. Kathy... I'm sorry I had to slap you. Maybe now you'll stop acting like a baby and give me a divorce. I'd rather see you dead. Philip, let go of me. Philip, you're hurting me. I can't breathe. No, Philip, I... I won't leave you, Philip. Stay up. Let go. Kathy, you all right? Kathy, get up. We've got to finish packing for our vacation. You're going with me. Kathy, Kathy, you're... She's dead. Kathy's dead. I don't know how long I stood there staring at her. At first, I... I just didn't believe she was dead. I told myself she's fainted, that she'd be all right. But I knew she wouldn't. And then for the first time, it hit me. I'd killed her. I started to run out of the house... I didn't know where I was going, but I had to get away. I couldn't let them find me. They'd know I'd done it. But sooner or later, they would find me. I couldn't run far enough and... Unless... Unless, yes, of course, unless they didn't know she'd been killed. So I walked back into the bedroom. There was the trunk, Kathy's trunk, open in one corner of the room. Why not put her body in it, send it up to the cabin... Then I could say she disappeared while she was out hiking. And even if they found her, no one would be able to tell how she died. It seemed so simple. 
I called the express company, and they said a man would be right over to pick it up the trunk. Then I wrote out a shipping tag. Linden Cabin, Silver Pine, California. I'm from Express Company. You got trunk? You want ship? That's right. In here. Okay. Where she go? She? The trunk. Where you want to send? Oh. The address is on the shipping tag. But this sure is heavy. Hey, what you got in there? Why, just some clothes and things. Well, whatever it is, we get it there safe and sound. Handle the care. That's our motto. He walked on down the path, bent double under the heavy weight of the trunk. I leaned against the wall, almost sick with relief. I was safe. No one would ever find out now. I went to the door and looked out. It was as though someone had kicked me in the stomach. What had gone wrong? Where had I slipped up? Who had sent for the police? Why, hello. What? What? What is it, officer? <laughs> Linda, don't you recognize me? Oh, oh! it's Charlie Cooper. Why, sure. Didn't Kathy tell you? I'm on the force. I was sworn in the day before yesterday. Haven't even arrested anybody yet. <laughs> hey, how do you like the uniform, huh? Oh, uh, fine. Fine, Charlie. Well, that's more like it. You know, someday you may be glad to have a policeman for your next-door neighbor. Why do you say that? Well, I might come in handy. Where's Kathy? Kathy? Why, she... She's out. Oh, I, I thought you two were going off on your vacation tonight. That's why I stopped in, to tell you goodbye. Yes, yes, we, we are leaving. Kathy's gone downtown to do some last-minute shopping. She's meeting me at the depot. Gee, I'm sorry to have missed her. Yeah, well, I'll tell her goodbye for you. I'm glad you stopped in, Charlie. It's nice that you got such a good job. Well, uh, aren't you going to answer the door? Huh? Oh, oh, yes, the door. Uh, wait a minute, I'll be right back. Mr. Linden, this trunk of yours. What about it? It's not packed right. We hit bump down on Oak Street. I think he's come open. Well, what, what do you mean? Just like I say, he's come apart. All right. All right, I'll, I'll take care of it. Just leave it here. Okay. Want me to pick it up later? Yes, yes, later. Oh, you better put on new shipping tag. All one must come off. Can't find it. Yes, yes, I will. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Don't worry, I will. Say, what's the matter, Phil? Oh, Kathy's trunk. She didn't pack it right. It started to come open. I thought you and Kathy were only going away for two weeks. We were. We are. Why? Isn't that an awful big trunk for such a short vacation? Well, yes, I guess it is. But you know Kathy. She always takes twice as much stuff as she needs. Oh, that's all right. I can help you repack it. I'm an expert packer from way back. But I, I don't have the key. I, I think Kathy's got it. Yeah, that's right. She took all the luggage keys with her. Well, maybe I can pry it open. No, no, don't do that. It would ruin the trunk. Uh... Charlie, how about a drink? It's so warm. I need one. Well, you go ahead. I want to see if I can jimmy this slot. But, Charlie, I... Hey, what's the matter with us? This trunk's wide open. Open? And look, all you have to do is push this little button and drop the hasp like this, flip these catches, and the lid will lift right up. Charlie, I... Here she goes. All right, Charlie, now you know. Know what? Here, take these rugs off the top. Rugs? Now, what's all this? Sweaters, socks, here's a coat. I never saw so much junk. Look at all these old clothes. Clothes? Is that, is that all there is? Yep, just struck bottom. Nothing but old clothes? Well, what did you expect to find? Oh, Charlie, Charlie, this isn't my trunk. Well, you said it was. Yeah, I know, I was wrong. It, it looks the same, but those aren't Kathy's things. I'd better go right down to the express company and see them. Maybe they've still got my trunk and they've mixed it up with this one. Maybe maybe they'll deliver it to the wrong place. I ought to try and catch them. Oh, don't be silly. Use the phone. Yeah, that's right. I'll use the telephone. 